I've got a few PCA tips just for you. Hello, I'm Josh Starmer and welcome to StatQuest. Today we're going to be talking about PCA and I'm going to give you a few practical tips. Specifically, we're going to talk about 1. Scaling your data, 2. Centering your data, and 3. How many principal components you should expect to get. Note, this is a follow-up to my video, Principal Component Analysis, PCA, Step-by-Step. -step. So make sure you've seen that video first, or at least already know how PCA works. Practical tip number one. Make sure the variables are on the same scale, and if not, scale them. Here we have math and reading scores for a bunch of students. Let's plot the data. Math scores are from 0 to 100, and they are spread out between 0 and 100 in the graph. In contrast, reading scores are only from 0 to 10 and they are all crammed between 0 and 10 on the graph. If we centered the data and did PCA on it, we'd get this recipe for PC1. To make PC1, mix 0.99 parts math with 0.1 part reading. It suggests that math is 10 times better than reading for capturing variation and aptitude. But this is only because the math scores are on a scale 10 times larger than the scale for reading scores. If we divided the math scores by 10 and replotted, and then centered the data and did PCA on it, we'd get this recipe for PC1. To make PC1, mix 0.77 parts math with 0.77 parts reading. This suggests that reading and math are equally good at capturing variation and aptitude. The moral of this story is that you need to make sure the scales for each variable, in this case math and reading scores, are roughly equivalent, otherwise you will be biased towards one of them. The standard practice is to divide each variable by its standard deviation. Thus, if a variable has a wide range, it will have a large standard deviation and dividing by it will scale the values a lot. If a variable has a narrow range, it will have a small standard deviation and scaling will be minimal. Practical tip number two. Make sure your data is centered. The very first step, centering the data, is an important one, but not every PCA program does this by default. If you do PCA using SVD without centering, it will still try to fit a line to the data that goes through the origin, and your PCs will not be what you expect. So double check that the PCA program you are using centers the data or center it yourself. Practical tip number three. How many principal components can you expect to find? In the first example, we had math and reading scores from a bunch of students. We then plotted the data on a two-dimensional graph. We then centered the data. And then we found the best fitting line that goes through the origin. This is PC1. The second PC, PC2, was the line perpendicular to PC1. Then we just moved on without asking if there were any more principal components. So now let's ask the question, is there a third principal component? To find a third PC, we'd need to find a line perpendicular to both PC1 and PC2. And in two dimensions, that's not possible. So the answer is no. To see why it's not possible to draw a line perpendicular to both PC1 and PC2, we could add a third line and rotate it until it is perpendicular to PC1 and PC2. This position is perpendicular to PC2, but not PC1. So we keep rotating. This position is perpendicular to PC1, but not PC2. Thus, 
When we measure two things, math and reading in this case, per sample, i.e. per student, at most we can have two principal components. Now imagine that math and reading scores are 100% correlated. Then we centered the data. Then we found the best fitting line, principal component 1. Technically speaking, we could find a line perpendicular to PC1. But if we projected the data onto this line, it would all just go to the origin. This means that the eigenvalue for the new line, the sum of squares of the distances between the points projected onto the line and the origin, would be zero. This means that PC1 accounts for 100% of the variation and the new line accounts for 0%. Thus, for all practical purposes, PC1 is the only one that matters. Likewise, if we only had two students, and then we centered the data, and then we found the best fitting line, PC1, then, just like before, we could find a line that is perpendicular to PC1, but the eigenvalue would be zero. So, just like before, there is really only one principal component worth talking about. Another, perhaps simpler way to think about this, is that two points define a line. So these two points can only define a single line. In order to define a plane, something with two axes, we need at least three points. Now, imagine we had two students and three test scores, math, reading, and gymnastics. We can center the data, and just like before, since we only have two points, and two points define a line, we only have one PC. Now imagine we had three students, and we remember that three points define a plane, and a plane has only two axes. Then we would predict that there would only be two principal components. So we can center the data, find the line through the origin that fits best, PC1, then find the line perpendicular to PC1 that fits best. And that's it, since a third line would have an eigenvalue equal to zero. There's no PC3. In summary, technically, there is a PC for each variable in the data set. However, if there are fewer samples than variables, then the number of samples puts an upper bound on the number of PCs with eigenvalues greater than zero. Hooray! We've made it to the end of another exciting stat quest. If you like this stat quest and want to see more, please subscribe. And if you'd like to support stat quest, well, consider buying one or two of my original songs. Okay, until next time, quest on!